Welcome to Dr. Tom Talks. Today, with the help of the Biodigital Human, I'm going to be talking about the most important thing in your life, which is sleep. So a brand new study just came out of Harvard University suggesting that if you get your sleep right, you could add up to five years to your life. I mean, that is phenomenal just by sleeping correctly. So I'm going to break down the study, and I'm also going to be talking a little bit about the physiology of sleep here using the 3D interactive half brain from the Biodigital Human. So first of all, what did this study show? It came out about a week or so ago, and it took about 200,000 people, surveyed them for about six years, and drew the following conclusion that if you get your sleep right, as a man, you can increase your lifespan by about five years, and as a woman, by about 2.5 years. So what are these criteria? Well, they actually nailed it down to five things. One was getting between seven and eight hours of sleep a night. Two was having no more than two nights a week where you find it difficult to get to sleep, having no more than two hours, two nights a week where you find it difficult to stay asleep, not taking sleep medications, and finally having five or more mornings a week where you feel well rested when you wake up. That's incredibly difficult to fulfill those criteria in this day and age when we have stressful jobs, we have families, we have kids, and so on and so forth. But there are a few things that you can do to actually help your sleep, even if you have a stressful job, kids, and so on and so forth. So first of all, trying to keep to a regular sleep schedule. So that is going to bed roughly the same time each night, waking up roughly the same time each morning. Secondly, doing exercise. You kill two birds with one stone because you exercise, which you should do, and you get to sleep better and more quickly and stay asleep because why? You're tired. Thirdly, not drinking alcohol and caffeine close to when you're going to bed or several hours before you go to bed. And then finally, limit the amount of light going into your eye when you're trying to get to sleep. So that means no TVs in the bedroom, cell phones and so on. Put your curtains down, you can get a sleep mask. So there's a few things that can just help you. You know, I don't really like the term hack, but help your brain get to sleep. Okay, so what about the physiology of sleep? I mentioned light. I'm going to get into that. I mentioned caffeine, but here's the brain. It's the half of your brain. It's the right side of your brain. And Inside your brain are these various sleep centers and wakefulness centers. And so here you can see with this sleep emoji that these are your sleep centers of the brain. And then here with these um, awake bicep curling emojis, these are your wake centers of the brain. I'm going to try and break it down using the draw feature. So I'll start with wakefulness. It starts here in the upper ponds, sends a signal up to the thalamus, which then sends a signal up to the cerebral cortex saying, let's be awake, let's be active. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, doesn't really matter but that's called your ascending arousal system. It's also helped by the hypothalamus and the lateral hypothalamus with various different neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, noradrenaline, they're the same one, serotonin, and various other neurotransmitters. I'll do that in turquoise and just show you that little pathway there. Okay, what happens when you have been awake for a while and actually you want to go to sleep? Well, it starts here in the VLPO, or ventrolateral preoptic nucleus. So you might've remembered from science, a term called ATP, that's kind of the energy resource in your brain. And this area breaks it down and it releases something called adenosine. Adenosine is the sleepy chemical that makes you go to sleep. And interestingly, that is where caffeine comes in because caffeine is the thing that blocks adenosine from working, the sleepy chemical. So that's why caffeine keeps you awake. So that's a, a, a sleep center of the brain that I want to point out. And there's also two others that I want to point out as well. I mentioned light, how that can keep you awake. And that's all to do with the suprachiasmatic nucleus. That's kind of your 24-hour circadian rhythm center of the brain. It's also affected by light. The more light you're exposed to, the more likely you are to stay awake. And the darkness is going to increase encourage somnolence or sleepiness. And then finally, the pineal gland, which uh, produces melatonin, which as I'm sure you may have heard, encourages uh, sleepy states. And also the VLPO does um, also uh, block some of the wakeful centers. So uh, it's acting in that respect too. So just a reminder to get good night's sleep, try and get to bed at the, uh, roughly the same time every night, try and limit the amount of light uh, exposure you have to your eyes, your eyelids in your bedroom, and try and do exercise. Don't drink caffeine and alcohol immediately or a few hours before you go to bed. That has been a Dr. Tom talk on sleep. For any more information, go to biodigital.com.